So do you have errors on your credit report? And if you do, you know, what do you do about it? How do you get these errors removed? Both great questions. We're going to tackle them in today's training. Hey everyone, it's Mike Adams and on this channel we empower individuals to achieve freedom through improved financial literacy. If you are new to this channel, make sure to click subscribe and click the bell so that way you get notified on any and all of our future training. So in today's video, we're going to answer a couple of questions. Number one, does your credit report have errors? That's one. And then number two, if it does have errors, what can you do about it to get these errors removed or corrected? So both really good questions. And it's been said that almost 80% of credit reports have at least one error. And, and that might sound like a stunningly big number. You're like, wait a second, why would there be so many errors on these credit reports? And again, if you've seen some of our other content where, where we've talked about you know, what credit reporting agencies are and are they truly concerned about accuracy of data versus just huge pile of data. Uh, you know, again, they make their money on selling our data to other businesses. So you know, they're not always concerned with accuracy. It's on us to be on our reports to make sure that things that are, that are showing on our report when it's pulled are actually our accounts and are accurate. So uh, unfortunately, but most, most reports do have some kind of errors. And when you think about some of the different ways that errors can show up on your report, some of them are, are simpler than you think. Most people instantly think, well, if there's an error in my report, it must be you know, identity theft or it must be this or it must be that. But there's a lot of different ways that things can end up on your credit report uh, that are not yours. But some of the most common errors that you'll see on our credit report, uh, number one is in the personal information section. Okay, so if you look at your credit report, and let's say you're looking at all three, you got your Equifax, your Experian, your TransUnion, and sometimes it's just not gonna be accurate. Um, they may have a former address for you. Sometimes a credit reporting agency will not have caught up on the fact that maybe you've moved. So if you're trying to qualify for something or qualify a loan and you tell them, hey, I live here, but your credit report says you live somewhere else, that could impact, you know, that error could impact your ability to qualify for a loan. So, so often there's just personal information errors. So just bear in mind when you're filling different things out, you want to make sure that things are the same way, you know, especially when we're working with business clients, we want to keep things uh, matching when you're filling out forms and documents, you know, when you're putting in your business name, whatever it is, you want to make sure you're writing it out the exact same way every single time. Or even the fact that sometimes your personal information is just mistyped, you know, maybe you mistyped it in uh, to, uh, on the form that you filled out and now on your credit report it's showing uh, incorrect address so you know that alone that gives you an error on your credit report now not necessarily an error that's going to now again when, when we're talking about the personal information section these aren't necessarily errors that are going to drop your credit score or damage your credit per se but it could impact your ability to qualify if you stated i live here and your credit report that they pulled says you live somewhere else that could impact your ability to qualify you know, sometimes as well, um, and this one, most people start thinking identity theft, but you sometimes you end up with somebody else's accounts on your credit report. And, and this is where you start getting into the area of things that can actually impact um, your score. So let's say there, again, there's somebody in your same city that was maybe born in the same town you were, maybe has close to the same birthday, same name. Uh, you know, they got some, some partial data matching going on. And so sometimes uh, somebody else's accounts might end up on your report. Now, if it's a positive account, obviously, uh, based on the scoring model, it will positively impact your credit. But if somebody's got a collection account or a, a bad account, they got 90 days late on this account and it's not your account, um, but someone's got some other data that matches yours. You know, it may not have been that that person stole your uh, identity per se, but just based on your credit being pulled and whatever came up in that data search, it just ended up on your report. You know, whichever bureau uh, they pulled it from just kind of raked over this information. It's like, okay, this person's, uh, we got some partial data, partial data matching, so we're gonna add it to the report. And then when they did their filtering, they weren't able to pull it all the way. So somebody else's accounts could end up on your uh, credit report simply by mistake by error and again it's not on the credit reporting agencies to catch this it's on you as the consumer 
And sometimes even your payment history with an account can have some errors on it. And this one is definitely important, especially if it's showing something on there like a 30 days late. Um, maybe it's showing as a 60 days late instead of a 30 days late, which would be a, a tougher ding on your, on your credit score. Or even showing a 90 days instead of 60 or either way, there's some kind of inaccuracy. And so, you know, again, those are some of the common areas where you're going to see errors on your credit report. And when you're pulling your report and you're looking at it for yourself, these are you know personal information you want to make sure it's all accurate you want to make sure that all the accounts that are on there are actually your accounts and then as well you want to make sure that all these accounts are reporting accurately with the proper payment history so what do you do if you find an error so let's say you know okay I found this erroneous account here and it's not actually my account you know what you want to do is you want to uh, send what's called a dispute letter to the credit reporting agency only that is um, and, and only the one that is actually reporting it. So again, if it's not on all three, this erroneous account, you only wanna dispute with that particular reporting agency. And now again, there are online ways to do a dispute, but I do not recommend doing an easy online dispute. I know in some, you can jump on their website, and you can just click a, you know, click a link or whatever. You wanna make, if you want them to take you serious and you wanna actually have a proper dispute, you always want to communicate with with the bureaus in writing okay uh, again you want them to take this serious and again uh, the chance that you're gonna get and so you got to remember when you're trying to go for the insta you know get this thing removed now you're kind of going up against the computer because again when you make this dispute you know they're gonna have to go and then verify that this account is actually yours they're gonna have to take action then and you have a much higher probability of either a um, them not um, being able to verify the information or b them running out of time because again, if you mail them your dispute letter, they have a re you know, what's what's stated as a reasonable amount of time, uh, usually 30 days upon receipt of your letter, um, to go ahead and initiate their investigation and complete their investigation. And if they're not able to complete their investigation within a reasonable amount of time, they will then be required to remove that item from your report. And so when you're writing that letter, an actual human being has to actually pick up and touch that letter. So again, you're creating additional instances where they may not be able to fulfill on their end, thus making it a little bit easier and better for you to make your disputes in writing always. So hopefully you guys found value in this training and just learning that yes, most credit reports have some errors and a lot of times you know there'll be in areas where you know it's personal information uh you know current or former employer current or former address and again that stuff's not necessarily going to impact your credit score but when we're talking about you know new accounts that are not yours on there uh, again if those are negative accounts that will definitely impact your credit score um and also you know accounts of your own that may just be reporting incorrectly you know perhaps maybe you've been making all your payments on this account but they reported that you were 30 days late Again, those are the three main places where you're gonna to wanna to be checking and watching your credit report at least once a quarter to make sure that all of these three areas are as accurate as possible. And when you do find those errors, make sure that you always do any of your disputes in writing. Don't do it the easy way. Don't do the click online and dispute online. Don't do that. To increase your chances of getting the item removed, you wanna submit those disputes always in writing. Hopefully you found value in this training. Make sure to, if you did, make sure to give it a comment, give it a like below. I will see you in the next video.